being here at this site is actually one of the most exciting of my efforts with food security. Because that's where actually you can go from ideas on paper to actually food being distributed for Americans in need. And the beauty of that food is not just packaged food, it's fresh produce, it's dairy, it's meat. Today we'll have about 2,400 cars come through here and we'll feed about 10,000 people. And so every family that comes through here today will get 90 pounds of groceries. And so the goal is bringing boxes of hope and healing to families in need. The beauty is uh, behind me is young people from the community who in the middle of a crisis rose up to meet the challenges of the neighborhood. We want to make ourselves better and our community better because this is where we were born. Yeah, the responses we get from people are amazing. They really need it, uh, they appreciate it. And so we just give back daily. We don't stop, we're here from, we're here from 5 a.m. till 4, 5, 6 p.m. sometimes. You guys have been doing incredible work. Um, continue to work hard on the times you're tired or frustrated or annoyed. Just remember, uh, a lot of people coming here are in crisis, are in need. And our job isn't to judge them, our job is to love them. It's been 14 months since all of this started. We're now over 1.6 million people that you guys have been able to feed. So a round of applause to you guys. We noticed working together with Rich Chicago Depository that some of the poor neighborhoods in the South actually didn't have enough distribution points didn't have enough areas so actually communities could go for easily. And out of that work, we realized that we need to do more to improve equity and social distribution across the city. This past year has been a difficult path. And so 60623, our zip code, was the hardest hit by COVID-19 over the past year uh, in Illinois. We've seen the intersection of COVID-19 hitting. We've seen the intersection of racism. We've seen the intersection of violence. And so with those challenges, uh, created an opportunity. So it's taking the perfect mix of a neighborhood that is resilient, that is full of life, young people that are incredible with energy, uh, volunteers, uh, the partnership of the Food Depository bringing food, and the Food Depository has been an incredible partner. Kate. Hey, Roberto, how are you? So great it's to see you. It's great to see you. Thank you for coming down. It has been such a busy couple of months, and yet we're just, we feel so grateful for everything you and your team has done. The Greater Chicago Food Depository is the food bank that serves Cook County, Illinois. We are part of uh, an amazing national network of food banks known as the Feeding America Network. There are 200 organizations serving every community in this country. Before the pandemic, we were serving close to 800,000 people all across Cook County. Of course, since the COVID-19 pandemic, that has changed dramatically. In the very early days of the pandemic, we began to see that the disparities, which had always been there, were becoming accentuated by the virus. And when we started to look at those community areas, we realized that those were the same community areas where we were seeing the longest lines at food pantries. We worked with their teams, with their frontline workers and help them address the upsurge in demand that we faced in the United States with the COVID crisis and figure out how they can actually deploy food in areas of greatest need. And that actually combine our design experts, our supply chain experts and their team, working to build capabilities that can be actually everlasting to increase their resilience, to then help a community to be better. So as you can see, we are busy uh -huh. um, and, you know, and even if you look up, <laughs> we are packed right now, which is great, but I think it also yeah. sort of speaks to the volume. And Kate, who works in this warehouse? The most amazing people in the world. We're shipping out anywhere between 200, 300, 400,000 pounds out of our shipping docks on a daily basis. Since early March, I've had 80% of my team work six days a week, 10, 12 hour days, 
all the way up to December when the holidays hit and we were able to get some time off and no one gave up. Everyone knew how important uh, it was for us to be here every single day. Uh, I just, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing the team that we have. Uh, I started off as a truck driver with the organization. Year, year after year, seeing the lines just grow, seeing the older adult community, the children, the schools, everyone that needed the food uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and ensuring that everything was on time. Um, that just, it, for me to have hope day-to-day, -day, ensuring that we're here, it means a lot to me. Right here, what you can see is that volunteers are packing boxes of shelf-stable food. These boxes have actually been the complete backbone of our COVID response. These boxes are gonna go into our inventory and then out into our community, ultimately to families. And it is the safest way to make sure that people are getting food without too many touches so it's been critical and we needed volunteers yeah. to do that for us. I come here twice a day, I do two shifts. I come in the morning and I come again in the afternoon. So I volunteer twice a day. I love to volunteer. I love to give my time. Even when I go back to work, I'll still come and give my time out to help all those who need the help. I really love working with this team. If you look at around the diversity, the age groups, all walks of life, you have professionals, you have homemakers, you have retired veterans, you have disabled people. We want to give back. That's the whole purpose of giving back to your community. At the end of the day, you go home and you're happy. Your heart is full. Well, there was a time where we weren't getting help to get food. Uh, my mom wasn't able to provide food for us. Um, so we had to be careful with what we ate. We sometimes just had bread because my mom was a single mom and she's busting her butt out to just get us the simple beans, simple tortillas. I think seeing my mom struggle and just battling her way to get food for us and just asking people, it is the reason, yeah, I'm very committed to coming here every day and making sure that everything that we have here, that we are able to give it so there's no asking no more. In 2011, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Fast forward, I exhausted all my savings, my checking, everything, I had nothing. I went to food insecurity. I didn't know where to turn. The Greater Food Depository. People started telling me. From that moment on, I said, hmm, I'm not gonna go hungry and neither will anybody else that I know because there's people here that volunteer their time and their effort. When I was a child in my hometown in Brazil, I still remember going to church and seeing an elderly man crying for food. And that actually profoundly impacted me. How could someone that could be my grandfather was there actually crying for a piece of bread? And actually profoundly impact all my view on what could I do to make a difference? And once I joined McKinsey and I realized that I actually could make a difference on my day to day, that becomes part of my mission. Tackling the challenge of food insecurity is very important for McKinsey. We are gonna do our part in contributing for an inclusive society and economy where all Americans can take part and benefit from it. But the first step, the very first step, is securing that Americans at any time have access to nutritious food.